Hello, welcome to the time lapse of my animatic that's titled We're Screwed, which a lot of people watched with zero context. So I'm here to add context to everything while you guys watch me draw every single thing that was in that animatic. Um, so to start things off, there's a bunch of stuff that like goes in there super quick. Uh, it's got like a little bit of flashing lights going on, um, but that's just, um, I drew a huge portion of the thumbnails just on a sheet of paper uh, at work. Um, and then I scanned them in one by one for a lot of them. And you'll see like later on, I actually scan in the rest of them. And it's not even all of them at some point. I just start doing the thumbnails like on the screen. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, here it is. Um, so context for everyone, I guess I'll start off with the characters. So Spider is first. Spider is our drow or dark elf rogue. Uh, he's the one with the rapier. Um, he is obsessed with money. He is kind of bad at lying and, uh, he's kind of a jerk with a heart of gold where he, uh, doesn't he sounds like he doesn't care, but he does. Um, and he is in a whole bunch of illegal crap and he tried to get out of it. And that's like his whole thing. He also has a familiar who is a, a Tressim, the, the little cat bird thing um, that is named Sunny uh, that he really loves and acts exactly like a cat. Um, next up we have RJ, who is the Tempest Cleric uh, Tiefling, who is the one with like the big ol' uh, hammer there, the, the war hammer. Uh, it's a spring-loaded war hammer. She is the embodiment of chaos. She is um, all over the place, crazy. Uh, you can kind of never predict her, except at this point we've been like, able to predict her because once you know what the most chaotic thing to happen in a moment is she'll do that um we've also got amelia who is our genasi monk uh fire genasi um she is hot-headed but she has since become not so via monkness um we've got Nico, who is our paladin, who is on the screen now, uh, he is a pretty boy half-elf who has not a single brain cell in his body, um, and um, he also has a funky sword axe thing that uh, he can put together, it's called Fors Machina, and it it's a sword and a shield, he puts the sword head into the shield, it becomes a big axe, it does a lot of extra damage. Uh, he has to like gain up charges on it first though. Um, and then finally we have Eatsley, who technically isn't on screen here. Uh, you saw me drawing them earlier just to be like a shadow in the background. Uh, they're my character, they are technically human uh, druid. and. They are the group mom and the chef for the party. They draw, they, um, they cook everything. They take care of everyone. They're the face of the party most of the time, where they're the ones who are talking to all the NPCs and like trying to handle the fact that everyone's extremely chaotic. Um, and they are also in a polyamorous relationship with Nico and Amelia, that paladin and the monk. Um, and they're about to die. <laughs> so, um, here's me loading in more <laughs> frames. Um, so before this climactic about battle happened, uh, the RJ and Eatsley, so RJ is that tiefling uh, cleric, and then um, Eatsley is my character, the one who's gonna die, the druid. Um, they received a curse from 
the BBEG, Malchus, uh, from just followers of him. He's just like an evil god. Uh, he regularly will send down a glare upon the world that makes things spawn um, and makes it a bad night for everyone. It'll control people, it'll just make shit bad. Um, and the party has been trying to handle the Malchus's glares uh which are just basically like red tinted nights um where all this crazy shit happens uh they've just been kind of trying to handle this while also slowly trying to find a way to stop him from existing um in typical chaotic fashion um rj that tempest cleric uh she because someone asked her to, just immediately bled on an altar, not asking any questions. Um, and she got a curse placed upon her where every once in a while uh, she was going to be evil and she's not allowed to talk about it. Uh, and she's going to be secretly working for Malchus. Um, Eatsley, who has telepathic abilities, tried to read her mind to see what was wrong because she's not able to talk about it, and also got that curse. So the whole reason for this entire quest that started this battle uh, was to solve the curse. Um, and it is not the only curse that Eatsley has. Uh, Eatsley is also an aberrant horror from the Grim Hollow, like homebrew books. Uh, Eatsley has a creature thing at like eldritch being that is in their head that is named vorp and uh they are trying they're slowly turning into an aberrant horror a monster like monstrous multiple eyes uh can turn arms into blades and uh tentacles and weird shit um but this whole plot thread was to fix both of them, uh, both RJ and Eatsley, um, and solve their curse. So they went to basically a secret area um, that no one knew about to try to solve it. They went through this whole giant quest and they ended up fighting a lot of bosses in a row doing like a little bit of a boss rush uh through a temple and then outside of the temple fighting another boss and then at the end of it like everyone was tired everyone like no one had any spell slots left uh we couldn't even like short rest between some of them um well not between all the boss fights but like at the end of the last one they we couldn't short rest uh, and at that point, it was just kind of like a, this has to be the last one, right? Um, and then at that point, uh, the evil god himself sends down his avatar, which is like the thing that they're fighting now. Uh, everyone's exhausted and doing shittily and all that stuff. Uh, and he just pops in, um... The actual, like, avatar for him, the thing that's in the very beginning, where it's, like, got all the horns and shit like that, uh, I drew on a different <laughs> thing, because I just couldn't get it to work when I was drawing it on the animatic thing. Um, this right here is Eatsley getting exposition from Vorp while Malchus's avatar, or Malchus, whatever, uh, is attacking all of their friends and just stopping every attack that they have uh basically everyone unloads everything they have and it does nothing to this guy so it was just a a big bad like just very one-sided battle in which he didn't actually like kill anyone else but it was a scripted death i felt like I had gone too many different directions with my character and I wasn't really having fun playing them anymore. So I uh, wanted them to either retire um, and open up a tavern or <laughs> die. And uh, you know, the option was there for both. It was just kind of like, this is the last job. I We really put a lot of death flags out there beforehand. Um, 
and in this thing, uh, Vorp, the aberrant being that's inside Eatsley's head, uh, gives a whole bunch of exposition and then says, hey, if you sacrifice yourself and sacrifice your body to me, um, I can get rid of this avatar and save your friends. And that is what Eatsley kind of agrees to. Eatsley's like, oh shit, uh, well, I don't want them to die. Uh, and goes and drops themselves off of a cliff uh, without, you know, but they real quick telepathically communicate all the exposition dumping that they just got uh, to Amelia, who is once again a part of, in a relationship with them, um, and also probably the most mature out of the rest of the party. Um, and also they sliced off their bag of holdings that the party could have some of the stuff that I, uh, <laughs> I didn't want the party to lose. Um, and, uh, they sacrifice themselves, uh, their body becomes, like, this giant aberrant being that's not them anymore, it's being controlled by Vorp, and that, that thing just drags off Malchus, as shown here, <laughs> um, and takes care of it, uh, and Eatsley is put into like a permanent state of like experiencing their emotion or their their memories uh for all time uh but vorp actually gives them a choice on what to whose emotions they can experience uh if they want to experience their own or if they wanted to experience vorp's uh memories and easily ends up choosing to go with Vorp just because uh, then it's a new experience. But either way, Eatsley is like basically dead. Uh, technically not, but in reality, yeah, uh, they're dead. Um, but the best part about it is the fact that all of the other characters got to experience grief and they used it to like just really like give their characters such good character development. Um, Spider, who is shown here crying with Sunny, his cat, familiar, um, was like super against showing emotion before, uh, but he just he just fucking lets it out. Uh, and he also multiclasses into Shadow Sorcerer because he got so pat so sad he got a uh, Shadow Magic. Um, Nico decides to kind of hold it in uh though he does cut off all of his luscious beautiful hair uh and you know drops it down off of the same cliff that Eatsley died off of uh to just in memoriam um but both Nico and Amelia kind of don't properly process their emotions they hug each other but they don't actually they're both just trying to get the other person to feel better they're not actually trying to feel through their own emotions or confront their own emotions of grief um rj just absolutely balls from the get-go like the second that it happens she's just crying uh they had a really close relationship uh where it was like almost like a father son or a mother son mother daughter or whatever um relationship and uh they were they were friends they were good friends and they were always uh rj very often needed someone to pick up after her dumb shenanigans and eatsley was there to do it um and she actually grows quite a lot from eatsley's death and she becomes the new group mom pretty quickly <laughs> or at least she becomes the most well adjusted uh <laughs> whose group mom is still technically up for debate uh it's not my new character, that's for sure. Uh, but she processes through her emotions and does proper crying. Uh, Spider does proper crying and hugs his cat for a long time. And then Nico and Amelia just kind of suck it in and like blow up later. Like um, I actually might do an animatic for uh, for Amelia's blow up 
later. Uh, she, she literally, like, as a Genasi, she has, like, fire that comes from her body. Uh, she just burns off all of her hair. Um, but it's really, really good how these characters have adapted to it and stuff. My new character is fun. I'm enjoying playing them. Uh, it's only been a few sessions since the actual, uh, quote unquote death. Um, but it has been great. Um, and there's, I don't know, some build up stuff there. Uh, <laughs> here we have Spider crying um horrendously um they did solve the problem with the the curse shortly afterwards uh which is good they actually did solve it and then rj was fine uh Eatsley didn't need to be cured because Eatsley was dead uh and here we have nico with his glorious hair in the last time i'm going to draw it because it's going to be cut off um i drew nico's armor like 80 times and i hate it I hate Nico's armor. It's not like a lower thing. This is just like, man, full plate armor is not it. I hate it. I hate drawing it. <laughs> um, but the whole animatic took me like a couple of months to draw. Um, we, we do D and D like at a physical table. Uh, we actually do it like two times a week but we flip around which game we're doing. We have like six different games. And because of that, it's only been like three sessions since Eatsley's death, uh, even though it's been like two, three months. Um, but here is one of my favorite panels is like Eatsley looking up at the light, uh, accepting Vorp's memories. Um, I originally wasn't going to include anything of that, but then I just, like, had this one spot of the animatic I didn't know what to do with, and it just worked. Um, I was originally just only going to show, like, the party and their stuff, but, uh, it didn't work out that way. But I really like what I did with everything, um, I really like how everything turned out, um, I like the fact that Eastley left behind not one but two lovers uh, because they were in a polyamorous relationship and they both have horrible co coping mechanisms and they're both doing so bad. <laughs> um, my new character is very fun to play and solved the problems that I had with my old character, although uh, it just so happened that immediately after getting my new character we went into another hard encounter uh and i didn't know how to use her yet so she immediately died uh <laughs> luckily revivify is a thing <laughs> but <laughs> it has been a lot of work uh, I put off doing the beginning for the longest amount of time. Uh, this is just like the opening part and it's like establishing shots and I hate those, but I know that I need them. <laughs> so those are th one of the last things that I did. I did them like a week ago. Uh, and as for like how, uh, how everything worked out, RJ now cooks for the party because before then Eatsley taught them how to, or taught her how to, um, and she's like the one who's like, you guys need to get your shit together and be serious, like process your grief properly, like we don't have time for your bullshit, um, which just makes her actually act like her wisdom score of 20. Um, <laughs> And other than that, I don't know what else to say. I think I'm just gonna like talk about how much I like drawing RJ. She's super cute. <laughs> She's just got like this cute pudginess to her that's like great. And then I also really liked drawing Nico's hair when it was long. It was like so fabulous. Uh, I hate drawing Nico's armor. Um, 
spider is like kind of difficult for me to draw every single time um i don't know what it is about like his shaved head thing like i just can't do it <laughs> and then um Amelia's pretty good, but I messed up her hair length for most of it, and then I fixed it afterwards. But yeah, um, that's that's the full explanation of everything that kind of goes on in there. Uh, thanks for watching.